think I really that's one thing I love about Newcastle is that idea of like an arcane language remains. Mm -hmm. There's a connection to there's a connection to English as a very broad thing yes. that you don't get in London quite as much. Um, yeah, I feel that very strongly here. There's, there's poetry in the language here. Do you, I was noticing there were Norse remains uh, in place names, uh, like the use of gate uh, mm. or road, uh, mm. which you also find in Yorkshire, of course, mm. which is purely Old Norse. Mm. Like that. Yeah, it's a lot of that. And also just stuff related to bodies of water and like the old kind of industries and that kind of stuff as well. What do you feel about place in terms of uh, belonging or ownership or inheritance or transition? Mm. What's, I mean, we're both in an anthology which is black and Asian poets uh, mm -hmm. writing about place, uh, but neither of us writes what might be the stereotypically expected poetry of loss, uh, of oh. always being in but not of. Oh yes, I, yeah. guess, um, I guess I came to this place, Newcastle, and didn't feel pushed away by it actually. Um, I was six, seven years old and I made really good friends and I loved this place. When I had to leave here I felt upset. So I didn't feel that sense of leaving Zambia as a loss as such until much later. Um, and I guess then I didn't feel moved to write about the loss as such. Mm -hmm. I felt moved to write about things around the loss perhaps. And so it wasn't just sadness that came out of that movement. I think that movement allowed me to write poetry and express in language in these terms because if I'd stayed in Zambia I wouldn't be a poet and being a poet is one of the things that keeps me sane right. <laughs> so, so I feel gratitude is maybe the wrong word but I feel um, I've made peace with with having left a place that I can't go back to and so I don't have that sense of loss that sometimes people have when writing about or through migration. Um, there, there's also a curious way in which I think places can be like people mm -hmm. and if you love a place or are engaged with a place day in day out mm -hmm. it would be rather strange to keep on harking back to the one you no longer had. Mm -hmm. It would be like the person who keeps telling a wife or husband uh, about the girl or boy they had a crush on when they were 11 mm. and never got together with but <laughs> have an imaginary perfect life with. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about uh, Trinidad in relation to those questions because I know you go back to Trinidad a lot and also the Caribbean generally you travel around, you've just been in Bocas and you um, travel around in the region. How do you feel also coming here with so many people traveling from different parts of the Caribbean and coming together here and having a sense of a Caribbean identity here. How do you um, how do you feel about belonging and place in relation to all of those uh, feelings? There's a curious way in which I've found places layer each other. Mm. So there's a way in which uh, when I am going towards Cambridge from anywhere else in Britain, the landscape starts to flatten out. I start to remember other flat places, uh, I think because I see likeness and homology mm -hmm. and I start remembering uh, the sort of sugarcane uh, areas uh, or the flat places uh, that you drive past uh, or, or live in if you might rent.